On today's show, Jalen Green leads the Houston Rockets in a huge comeback win against the Memphis Grizzlies. Why Jabari Smith Jr. is the X factor for this Rockets team and so much more. It's all coming up on today's Locked on Rockets. This is Mission Control Houston. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. The sky is no longer falling. You can put the pitchforks away. Doomers, please relax. The Houston Rockets have won their second game of the season. They're now 1-1 one one after beating the Memphis Grizzlies 128-108. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. As always, I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, native Houstonian and credentialed media member. I'm also the host of Locked on NBA Mondays. Be sure to follow along wherever you listen to your podcasts or on YouTube. Just search Locked on Rockets, where the best way you can help us grow our show is to listen every single day on a podcast platform of your choosing. Like and subscribe on YouTube. And while you're there, drop us a comment. Say go Rockets. Give us your thoughts on the game. All that good stuff. Now, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. It's that simple. Go, go get started over at FanDuel.com. And as always, thank you so much for making Lockdown Rockets part of your day every single day, whether it's on your way to work, on your lunch break, in the gym. Thank you so much for being an everyday Rockets beating the Grizzlies. This was a really good bounce back game. This was the type of effort and performance that you had hoped we would have seen on opening night uh maybe not so much with the Rockets going down 12 there for a little bit uh but the Rockets responded really really well in the second half of this game against the Grizzlies again they trailed by as many as 12 um before fighting back taking the lead gonna get into a little bit of the game flow I'm gonna talk about Jalen Green's big night uh, why Jabari Smith Jr. feels like the X factor for this Rockets team, the bounce back from the bench unit, uh, Udoka's adjustments throughout the game, different lineups that he threw out there, and so much more to get into. But I want to start right with Jalen Green, who I was pretty critical. We were pretty critical of him, of him in the recap and in the episode thereafter with Madison about his play against the Hornets. This version of Jalen Green, the way that he played in this game against the Grizzlies is to me, the process was perfect. Everything that he did in this game, I, I, I couldn't have been happier with his production, with his ability to involve his teammates. And even though he finished eight of 21, you know, didn't hit all his free throws, could have shot the ball a little bit better from the floor. This was the perfect version of Jalen Green in my mind for what this Houston Rockets team ultimately needs. He finished the game with 22 points, again, on 8 of 21 shooting. He was 4 of 8 from downtown. That's a fantastic number for him. 2 of 6 from the charity stripe. You want that to be a little bit better. But he had 6 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 steals, and a block in there. Only 2 turnovers was plus 19 in his 32 minutes of run. And he really helped ignite the Rockets' comeback in this game in that third quarter because... The Rockets went into halftime with a six-point deficit. They did not play a really good first half of basketball. I'm sure that Ime Odoka lit them up at halftime about their effort, about their rotations, about everything that was going wrong in that first half. Honestly, it was a miracle that they only trailed by six after the first half that they had. It felt like it would have been a lot worse than that. Um, but they came out, they were really strong in that third quarter. And a big part of that was Jalen Green and, and leading the way by getting after it defensively, the deflections, the steals, the block shot that he had, getting out in transition and getting a huge yam, uh, you know, after a, a good defensive stop on the other end. There were so many little things that he was doing. And when he's that locked in defensively, it, it, it's still the Rockets still need him to produce on offense, but it, it's it's one of those things that I I feel like he's finding ways to get himself going defensively, and then that helps kind of get things flowing on the other end of the court as well. And the big thing for him in this game that stood out that was so different from 
game one against the Hornets is he was actively looking to get other guys involved. He wasn't just settling for, oh, okay, they're going under the screen. Cool. I'm going to pull the trigger on the three and go five of 15. He didn't do that again. Now there were still plenty of opportunities within the flow of the offense for him to take threes, to take good, high quality looks from beyond the arc. But at the same time, he also diversified his offensive approach. He got downhill quite a bit. He got to his mid range. He tried to finish at the rim. He drew some fouls and above Above all else, he was driving, getting downhill, and kicking it out to teammates. He was facilitating at a really great clip. He had the four assists in there. I'd be very curious to go dig up and see how many potential assists he finished this game with. But by and large, this is exactly the type of game that you want to see from Jalen Green. He was the tip of the spear for the Houston Rockets in this game. He did a great job not settling for any one area of his game, right? Not just relying on the three ball, not just relying on getting downhill. He truly attacked at all three three levels in this game and by doing that it made it really hard for the Grizzlies to check him ultimately like he's a really hard cover when he's got it working from all three levels of the floor and then you add in you sprinkle in that playmaking that he's able to do for his teammates and it this felt like a much more well-balanced offensive approach by the Houston Rockets. All five starters were in double figures. Jalen Green did lead the way with 22, but Fred Van Vliet was hitting his shots in this game, 16 points on five of nine shooting, all of them coming from downtown. Alperin Shingoon had 16 and 15 rebounds. Dylan Brooks finished with 18 points on five of 12 shooting. Jabari Smith Jr., 14 points on five of 13 shooting. Like this was a much more well-balanced offensive approach rather than just Jalen Green gets his, Alperin Shingun gets his, and then nobody else is in rhythm and come third quarter, fourth quarter, whatever, everybody's ice cold, nobody's in rhythm, and only those two guys have it going. And then once the defense was able to clamp down, make adjustments, or in Jalen Green's case, right, if the shot dries up, then you know, it's all she wrote, right? And then nobody else is able to step up to help bring bring it home to the finish line. So this felt like a much, much better game process-wise for Jalen Green, for the rest of the starters as well. This was, honestly, honestly, let's just pretend this was, let's pretend that this was game one of the regular season. We just won't even count the Hornets game. We'll say that the Hornets game was like the fifth preseason game. So let's pretend it doesn't even happen. Rockets are now 1-0. We're just going to be in denial about the Hornets game ever actually taking place. But coming up, I want to get into why Jabari Smith Jr. feels like the X factor for this Houston Rockets team. I want to talk about the bounce back that we saw from the bench unit, some adjustments that we witnessed from Ime Odoka in this game, and so much more. We're going to get there in just one moment. First, today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. What is Prize Picks? It's the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to everyone. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. It really is that simple. And if you sign up today, you get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's that simple. And Prize Picks puts its members first. So all withdrawals are are fast, safe, and secure. When your picks hit, you can get your money in as quick as 15 minutes. So look, give Prize Picks a chance. Download the app today. Use code Locked on NBA and get your fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup. Again, download the app today. Use code Locked on NBA and get fifty dollars instantly after your first five dollar lineup. Prize Picks, run your game. And continuing on here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. All right, next area of this game that I really want to highlight here, right? Rockets made that big comeback in that third quarter. 39-18 uh, was the final after that quarter. So the Rockets were plus 21 in that frame. Uh, they were hitting shots. Things looked really good. They were defending at a high level. But the number one thing that the Rockets did in this game that they did not do against the Charlotte Hornets was they rebounded the absolute hell out of the basketball. They finished plus 21 in the rebounding department, finished the game 64 to 43 uh, in the rebounding department. They had 23 offensive rebounds to the tune of 27 second chance points, only 17 second chance points allowed to the Grizzlies. And look, the Grizzlies are a team that's known for being a big bruising kind of grinded out, whatever ball club. Maybe things are a little bit different this year. Maybe things are different still with no Jaron Jackson jr. There in the lineup and their identities changed a little bit since having Dylan Brooks, Steven Adams, but that used to be the identity 
of the Memphis Grizzlies. Now that's the identity of the Houston Rockets. They definitely took advantage in the rebounding department. So many great rebounding performances up and down the roster in this game. Alperin Shingun, again, that monster double-double, 16 and 15 rebounds. Five of his boards were on the offensive glass. And then just up and down the starting lineup, four boards for Dylan Brooks. You'd still like to see that number be a little bit better. But three rebounds for Fred, six rebounds for Jalen Green off the bench. Tari Eason, five rebounds. Min Thompson, six rebounds. Cam Whitmore, three rebounds. The team as a whole definitely took to heart that rebounding was such a big issue. Ime Odoka mentioned that at one point pregame that, you know, re that rebounding was a problem for this Rockets team against the Hornets. So clearly they cleaned up a lot of stuff there. But Jabari Smith Jr., I thought, was the biggest factor in this game. 16 rebounds. Uh, six of them were on the offensive glass. He finished the game with 14 points, 5 of 13 shooting. He missed all three of his three-point attempts, but he did get to the free throw line four times, hit all of them. Uh, he had four assists mixed in there and a couple block shots. This is the version of Jabari Smith Jr. that the Rockets need every single night. This is the version of Jabari Smith Jr. that it doesn't even matter that his three ball wasn't falling. He was so incredibly active on the glass. He was so active defensively. And he was this like underrated kind of connective tissue piece on the offensive end, right? Where he'd get, a, you know, get an offense rebound. And if he couldn't put it back up, kicking it back out for open threes, open shots. Like this is the Jabari that can absolutely continue to earn or, or keep his starting spot and be impactful. And then the shooting is just the cherry on top. And I think he's a good enough shooter that look, he's just off to a rough start, right? He had a rough start in preseason. It's kind of carried over now into the regular season a little bit. Maybe he's in his, in his head a little bit about the three-point shot whatever it is I, I it's he's slumping right shooting slumps happen when he breaks out of that shooting slump and he's back to his 36 37 percent shooting and, and hopefully even better than that as he builds on it this season that is absolutely an integral part of the rocket success on a nightly basis he gives you so much and in this game it really did feel like he he and Jalen I thought kind of like helped lead the comeback energy wise, especially it kind of started at the end of the second half um, where the Rockets decided to go small at the end of the second half uh, with Jabari Smith Jr. playing the five spot and Min Thompson inserted for Alperin Shingun. And then really where the flow of this game changed was that third quarter where Fred Van Vliet picked up his fourth foul very early in the frame. And the Rockets had already started kind of clawing their way back into the game early in that third quarter when, when Fred had to go sit down with four fouls. But Fred goes and sits down. Amin Thompson gets inserted into the game. And then the Rockets just took off from that point. Like having Amin Thompson out there, having all that size against the Grizzlies lineup. Look, the Rockets were like oversized at that point because they had size on almost every position on the court uh, aside from the five-spot Alperin Shingun versus... Uh, Alperin Shingun versus Zach Eady, uh, Jalen Green, bigger than Ja Morant, uh, Dylan Brooks, bigger than Marcus Smart, uh, elsewhere, uh, who, who's next in the Rockets lineup, Amin Thompson, bigger than Desmond Bain, Jabari Smith Jr., bigger than Santi Aldama, like the Rockets just had so much size on the court in that third quarter, they were able to rebound at an excellent rate, their offense started clicking, they were able to get some great downhill opportunities, it was honestly a beautiful third quarter. And this was a really encouraging sign because going, going, dating back to last season and even through the early part of preseason and these first couple of games, the Rockets have, I think, an over-reliance on Fred Van Vliet, right? Like he, they, they rely on him almost an unhealthy amount to be able to produce and create and do everything when he's on the floor for this Rockets team. And oftentimes we see the offense come to a screeching halt. We see things start to look really, really bad when Fred Van Vliet goes to the bench, case in point, game one. And this didn't happen, right? Fred Van Vliet goes and sits down, and instead the Rockets actually claw their way back and expand on that lead with Fred resting on the bench. Like, that was a such a welcome development. And again, a, a lot of credit has to go to Amin Thompson for being so effective when inserted in with the rest of the starters. Again, he's a chameleon. He can play whatever role you want him to play on the court. He had some really great moments where he'd get the rebound and push the length of the court and then find an open shooter. He finished the game with nine points, 
six rebounds, three assists. Um, he did have eight turnovers, so some sloppy play at times for Min Thompson while he's still trying to feel his way out and understand how he can attack and how he can be effective. But you like the aggression, right? You love seeing Min Thompson trying to find himself, trying to understand where he can be, where he can pick and choose his spots, how he can get his teammates involved, understanding, okay, it's my turn to attack versus it's my turn to collapse the defense and kick a pass out to a teammate. All those little things that he brings to the table. So that flow in that third quarter was so important. And honestly, one of the biggest like changes in this game was just the sheer impact from the bench unit. Uh, the bench unit was fantastic in this game, I thought. Uh, you look up and down the roster, Tari Eason uh, and Cam Whitmore both in double figures off the Rockets bench. Amin Thompson had his nine points. Reed Shepard hit a couple threes, dished out a couple assists. Like the, the Rockets bench unit was where it needed to be in this game. And this was a good example, I think, of how we're going to see the bench, how we're going to see the Rockets rotations and lineups be fluid throughout the season. Because Cam Whitmore, uh, the, the Rockets effectively didn't run a backup center in the second half of this game. Ime Odoka electing to go with his kind of, you know, uh, small, whatever, small ball lineup. It's not really small ball, but Jabari Smith Jr. at the five lineup, essentially, is what Ime decided to run in the second half, which I thought was such a crucial adjustment for him, especially looking at the first half and seeing how once Zach Eady was off the floor, Jay Huff, Santi Aldama, uh, they were burning the Rockets from three-point land. Jay Huff had two threes off the bench. Santi Aldama uh, only attempted the one three, but it felt like his his presence, his threat to shoot was important there in that second unit. But yeah, elsewhere in the second unit, John Conchar was out there attempting threes. Uh, Brandon Clark got one up in that second unit. That second unit for the Grizzlies definitely prioritizes five-out spacing and getting that three ball up on, you know, just getting the three ball up, right? Attempting a lot of threes. And it didn't feel like Jock Landale was the right was the right player to have in. And he only got that little six minute, you know, window in the first half. And then we didn't see Jock Landale come back in the second half. And in fact, we saw Alper and Shingun's minutes eh, a little limited, right? Only 32 minutes played in this game. Uh, Jabari Smith Jr. was the high minutes man in this one with 35 minutes played. And it does feel like Ime Odoka going to Jabari Smith Jr. as the small ball five, what have you, is kind of like a, it's a little bit of like a safety blanket for him, right? Being able to go to a switch everything one through five defense uh, to flatten things out, to slow a team down offensively. And it worked really well in this game. And and again, a lot of credit to Jabari Smith Jr., a lot of credit to Amin Thompson, a lot of credit to Tari Eason. Uh, their production off the bench was, was fantastic. Uh, but the adjustment, I thought, by Ime to not go back to Jock Landale, to instead go back to playing with Jabari at the five, I thought that allowed the Rockets to match up a lot better with the Grizzlies, with their second unit players, and to not give up all those three-point attempts that they felt, it felt like they gave up a lot of attempts from long distance in the first half and that they cut down on that in the second half. In fact, I can find out if that matches the eye test here really quickly. First half, Grizzlies. Yeah, first half, Grizzlies shot eight of 14 from downtown. Rockets managed to shoot nine of 24 from downtown. And then in the second half, the Grizzlies were limited to just two of 14 shooting from downtown while the Rockets continued their really impressive shooting uh, display, eight of 19 from downtown in the Rockets' second half performance. So, honestly, great adjustment by Ime Udoka to go to the switch everything lineup to take away so many of those offensive opportunities from the Grizzlies second unit. But speaking of second units, I kind of, uh, I kind of went off the beaten path there. I got to talking about Ime's adjustments there for a moment. I wanted to highlight just how important the bench unit was in this game for the Houston Rockets. Going to do that in just one moment as well as final thoughts from this one. 
First, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Look, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats for you, live play-by-play, and so much more on the exact same page where you actually place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Head on over there. Take a look at all the different wagers that are available to you. You can take a look at their parlay builder, different season awards winners, or the outright favorites to win this year's Super Bowl. Right now, the Chiefs plus 430, the Ravens right behind them at plus 550, the Lions plus 750, the 49ers plus 850, and then rounding out the top six, the Buffalo Bills plus 1100, and your Houston Texans plus 1300. So for all those odds and so much more, head on over to FanDuel.com. And final segment here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. All right. The bench unit for the Houston Rockets in this game was night and day different than game one of the regular season. Honestly, a lot of guys didn't look like they were ready to play in game one, especially off the bench. And then that got exposed, particularly in the second half when Charlotte started to make their run. In this game, though, the bench unit looked completely different. Uh, They were much more comfortable out there. I think having the five out spacing helped them a ton. Uh, Credit to Reed Shepard for a couple of his assists where he found Tari Eason. Tari Eason had a great shooting performance in this one. Three of four from downtown, five of seven overall. He had 13 points, the five rebounds, two steals, had a block in there. Uh, Amin Thompson talked about his role and kind of stepping in with the starters in that uh, in that third quarter, and then Fred Van Vliet was able to kind of run the show when he got back in a little bit later on. Cam Whitmore off the bench, still really aggressive, had uh, a team high off the bench, 12 shot attempts, 11 points, 5 of 12, missed all four of his threes, but he got to the rim, he got to the free throw line. Uh, he had this one play where he just completely like bulldozed and bodied right past Ja Morant, which looked great. Like he gave him kind of a dose of his own medicine, hit him with like a just kind of like a whirlwind spin move, elevated right there at the rim. There's nothing you could do about it. Like it was just everybody decided to just get out of the way of Cam Whitmore. Um, so when the Rockets get this kind of production out of their bench unit, it's going to be really hard to beat them. Like this is this is the kind of production that we were hoping that we would see out of a Rockets team that is supposedly as deep as they looked on paper. And I want to give Ime Odoka a lot of credit for not just sticking to his guns of like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to put my backup center in there. I'm going to make sure Jock Landale gets his minutes, what have you. No, he adjusted and he had to adjust for a couple different reasons, right? He had to adjust because of what the Grizzlies were doing with their five out lineup and their spacing and then going to the switch everything scheme worked a lot better defensively for the Rockets, especially in that third quarter. But then on top of that, he went with the guys who were being more productive. You know, Jock Landale in his few minutes that he was on the court, he had three rebounds. He didn't attempt a single shot, but it just, it didn't feel like the right piece, right, for success at that time. In fact, we actually, we had actually seen uh, before Jock Landale got subbed into the game, there was a, uh, miscommunication, I believe it was. And I actually, maybe I'm mixing this up. There was a point in the game, or pretty early on, it was definitely first half, where Alper and Shingun failed to get back in transition. And when he did get back, he tried to he tried to signal to one of the other Rockets players, hey, go out and pick this guy up on the perimeter. They were too late trying to figure out who's getting matched up who in the open court. And it led to a wide open three. And Ime Odoka immediately called a timeout and he was pissed. And he walked over and he like lit up Alper and Shingun when that happened. And when the Rockets came back from that timeout, Alpi was no longer on the floor. Now I'm I, I'm torn up in my head because I'm going off rip here, whether that was the first set of substitutions and uh, that was uh, Jock Landale that got subbed in for him, or if that was later in the game uh, when I highlighted that that closing lineup that the Rockets had to close out the first half where they brought back in Amin Thompson and closed with the five-out switch-everything lineup. Either way, like that was an issue at points because of the Grizzlies five out spacing when they did have five shooters out there on the perimeter. There were some moments where Shingun was getting burned, but I do want to highlight here 
that Shingun's pick and roll defense was really good in this game. He did a great job defending. He did a great job kind of playing between the ball handler, playing between the big. He denied a couple entry passes to Zach Eady. Honestly, he had, I thought, a really, really solid the defensive performance from or sorry, the Alperin Shingun had a really, really solid defensive performance overall in this game. There were a couple moments where because of the lineup out there, because of the like I guess positional mismatches a little bit to an extent um, were a little bit harder for him to cover. And and again, Ime Odoka made sure to let him know that at times on the bench. But outside of that, a really strong performance from him. Again, I've mentioned it a couple times, but he had those 15 rebounds in there, five of them on the offensive glass. It was a strong game for him. You'd like to see him, again, be a little bit more efficient uh, inside, you know, the, the way that he was attacking, but 5 of 11 shooting inside the arc, that's not bad. He missed both of his threes. He got to the free throw line a ton, eight attempts there, hit six of them, uh, had two assists, had a steal mixed in there. Overall, a strong game for Alper and Shingun. He just wasn't necessarily the focal point in this game. Realistically, there wasn't a singular focal point for the Rockets in this game. Again, you look up and down the box score, they had seven guys in double figures, almost eight guys with a Min Thompson sitting there, uh, with nine points, which also shout out to Amin Thompson for drilling all five of his free throws. Uh, that's really big for him too, right? For him, for his shooting development, for him getting better as a player. It's not just about, can he knock down that three ball over time? He's the guy that he's going to get sent to the free throw line a ton with his game, with his downhill ability. There's going to be plenty of times where teams are going to be fouling the crap out of him on the way to the hole. And he's got to be able to capitalize at the free throw line at at least like a 70% clip, like anything worse than that. And it's going to be a win for the defense to send him to the free throw line. So seeing him hit five of five in this game was incredibly encouraging. Honestly, this was the style of game that you want to see the Rockets play on a nightly basis. They look, they hit their free throws at a somewhat respectable clip, just under 70%. You'll take it. You'd like to see that be a little bit better, but honestly, You'll take that. They had the rebounding in their department largely in favor. They shot really well from beyond the arc in this game, 39.5%, 17 of 43 overall. They did the little things, though. They hustled. They made the effort plays. They made the second and third efforts defensively. Um, Ja Morant did not have a very good game in this one. 24 points, 8 of 17 shooting, 6 turnovers. The Rockets did about as good a job as you can hope to do containing Ja Morant. And again, a big part of that was those stretches where they did go to their switch everything defense. It felt like they had a, they did a really great job of kind of flattening things out. There were some, in, some really great individual one-on-one -on -one defensive moments against Ja Morant. Dylan Brooks had a couple really good possessions on him. Amin Thompson had some good possessions on him. Jalen Green. Like, the Rockets had a bunch... They basically threw a bunch of different looks at Ja Morant over the course of the game. And as an offensive player, that gets really tough because if you're being checked by one guy repeatedly, your primary defender or whatever, you start to understand the tendencies. You start to understand, okay, well, I can beat this guy going this way. But then if you switch up the defender, which happens a lot when the, when the Rockets switch everything one through four or when they switch one through five in their defensive schemes, then it gets to be a lot more difficult, right? There's just... It's hard to predict which defender is going to be on you. It's hard to figure out, okay, well, if I've got a longer, lengthier defender on me, then I've got to settle for, you know, I've got to get him on his heels and then try to pull it back out and get a shot over the top uh, or try and burn, you know, get past him if I'm fast enough. Like, it it leads to a lot of question marks and it makes it a lot harder for the offensive player to get into any kind of flow or rhythm. So I thought the Rockets honestly did a great job there. They didn't let Zach Eady dominate inside. Um... Honestly, the one guy that I thought that they didn't defend very well was Scottie Pippen Jr. off the bench. Kind of felt like he was getting more or less whatever he wanted. 13 points off the bench, 4 of 9 shooting. He was 2 of 3 from downtown. Uh, but by and large, really, really strong game for the Rockets. And this was exactly what you wanted to see out of them, that you wanted to see them bounce back in a really, really big way after that disappointing game against the Charlotte Hornets in the opener. But... They don't have much time to rest because their very next game is against the San Antonio Spurs Saturday night. Uh, by the time I get this out for consumption, it might only be, you know, five or six hours before the game ultimately tips off Saturday afternoon. But check this one out um, and be tuned back in right here for our recap for the San Antonio Spurs game. Because, again, this Rockets team, they're off to the races. They deal with the Spurs 
for their next two games, two games back to not back to back, but Saturday night in San Antonio, then Monday night in San Antonio. So you get a double dose of Victor women, Yama and Chris Paul and the Spurs. They're not a slouch this season, man. They they were going toe to toe with the Mavericks there, blow for blow, through about two and a half quarters before the Mavericks peeled off in that third quarter in their season opener. So it should be a fun, exciting game. We get to see Alper and Shingun go up against uh, Victor Wimbyama again. Remember, he hung his career high forty five points on Wimby last season. So maybe it'll be a big night for. Alperin Shingun, but hopefully the Rockets can use the momentum from this game against the Grizzlies, pick up a couple more wins in San Antonio against a Spurs team that has no business winning against the Rockets. I'm curious your thoughts. Give me your reactions. Give me your feelings after this first win of the Houston Rockets season. Let me know in the YouTube comments. But as always, thank you so much for checking out the show. Remember, the best way you can help us grow our show is to listen every single day on a podcast platform of your choosing. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Drop us a comment while you're there. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And we look forward to having you back right here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball.